divine service setting three with Holy Communion, starting on page 184 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that at his second coming we may worship him in purity, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. people 
be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Starting in verse 1. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. Who would bear your way? The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem we're going out to him, are being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, and wore a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Continue by singing the sermon hymn, verses 1, 2, and 3 
of him in 344 on Jordan's bank, the Baptist Cross. Not because of the law. 
Testament lesson for today and the Gospel lesson for today. In the Old Testament lesson for today, our God speaks to the prophet Isaiah, making a promise and a prophecy. One day he will send one, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way for the Lord. You and I have the great God. You and I have the awesome God. He always keeps all of his words and all of his promises, no matter what. And so as we look at the gospel lesson for today, we find the fulfillment of that promise and prophecy was St. John the Baptist, doing his work at the waters of the Jordan River out there in the wilderness. His job was to change, to transform the hearts and the minds of God's people, the Jews. The faithful Jews who believed that one day God would keep his promise and send a Savior and save them from their sins. To make them ready to receive Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior and as their Redeemer. So in the Gospel lesson for today, we find that as John the Baptist proclaimed the Word of God at the waters of the Jordan River, the voice of God went forth out into the world, and it became a magnet. And it pulled all the faithful Jews to him from Jerusalem and Judea to the waters of the Jordan River. And they came out to him in the multitudes. And when they got there, they again heard the voice of our God. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. See your sin, own your sin, have sorrow for your sin, confess your sin. And then after the law was the gospel. Come on down into the waters of the Jordan River and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Be cleansed and purified, reconciled and restored. And in this way, God's people, the Jews, were changed and transformed. The old was replaced by the new. And now they are ready to receive Jesus as their Savior. That guy, Jesus, that guy who was the son of the carpenter, that guy, Jesus, from Nazareth, he is the Savior, the Lord, and the Redeemer. And it was all done according to the way heaven. 
heavens and a new earth. And the only thing that remains is the word and the way and the will of our God. The word, the way, and the will of the fallen and broken world is the opposite of the word and the way and the will of our God. And it's temporary and it's transitory and it's always the wrong way. You and I who are God's people, you and I who are the people of the way, we're the ones through whom the Holy Spirit works through the gospel and our faith to get us to love the Lord our God with our heart and our soul and our mind and love our neighbor as ourselves. And many times we do. And when we do, we rejoice, giving to God all praise and honor and glory. But also many times we don't, because we all have the sinful flesh. Because we all have the sinful flesh, we all go the wrong way. Because we all have the sinful flesh, we all think thoughts that we shouldn't think. We all go to places we shouldn't go. We all say things we shouldn't say. We all do things that we shouldn't do. Because of the sinful flesh, every one of us goes the wrong way. So we look to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who does not go the wrong way. The one who always goes the right way the times that we've gone the wrong way. In the way of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ also led him out to St. John the Baptist to the waters of the Jordan River so that he could be baptized so that all righteousness could be fulfilled. So righteousness could be filled in this way. When Jesus stepped into the waters of the Jordan River to be baptized for his baptism, he stepped into your baptismal waters and my baptismal waters. And since you and I were baptized into Christ, when we stepped into our baptismal waters, we stepped into his baptismal waters. So we could take our bad and give to us his good. So we could take our old and give to us his new. And when that happened, the holy connected with the sinful divine with the earthly. We came into the real presence of Christ, and he took upon himself sin. All of your sins, all of my sins, all of the sins of all the people of the world, because he is the Lamb of God. He took all those sins, and they placed them on his shoulders, and he brought them to the cross. We died upon the cross on Good Friday, paying for all those sins with all of his life and all of his body and all of his blood. He paid for them in full. They all died with him when he died upon the cross. So Jesus could give to you and me forgiveness of sins. We are released from them, and they are released from us. They are no more. Removed as far away from you and me as the east is from the west. And when Jesus gave up his life and his body and his blood as payment for sins, he didn't just barely pay the redeeming price. Notice what Isaiah the prophet says in the first few verses of the Old Testament lesson for today. Comfort, comfort ye my people. Your hard warfare is ended. The Lord by his hand has provided devil for your sins. So they are forgiven. Because Jesus gave up all of his life and all of his body and all of his blood and because he is fully God. He paid twice as much as is required twice as much as is demanded for the forgiveness of your sins and the forgiveness of my sins. 
So nothing else has to be done. Nothing else has to be said. It is finished. Finished in Jesus. His life, his death, his resurrection. All according to the way of the Lord. Now it comes down to you. Now it comes down to me. Those who wear and bear the name of Christ. Those who wear and bear the name of the people of the way. The word way also means the highway, the road, the path that we travel on. And our highway goes from the baptismal font to the promised land. And as we make that pilgrimage through the wilderness, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ remains with us. He is Emmanuel, God with you. The one who has promised you, I will never forsake you or forget you or abandon you, but be with you even until the end of the age. So now I go back to the words of Isaiah the prophet. As you and I go screaming down the highway of our life from the baptismal font to the promised land, Isaiah the prophet reminds you and me that you and I are going to hit the crooked road that needs to be made straight. The crooked road is sin. All of your sins. All of my sins. That we've committed against God and our fellow man. All the sins committed against us of all the suffering and all the pain. And all those sins, they become oppressive. A heavy yoke. A heavy burden. And all those sins, as St. Paul tells us in the epistles, clings to us like hot tar. And they do become a burden. They do become bondage. They do become imprisonment. They paralyze us. They stop us from being all that we can be and all that we can do. So when that happens, your Jesus who is with you says to you, as Isaiah says in the Old Testament lesson for today, do not fear. Do not be afraid. For I am with you in the places he's promised to be, the waters of baptism, the words of holy absolution, the bread and wine of Holy Communion, the words of the Gospel proclaimed in a law gospel manner. So you are forgiven, totally forgiven. All the sins, the big ones, the little ones, and all the other ones in between. All of your sins, all the sins committed against you, no more. And that's how our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ makes the crooked road straight. The same way he did for the Jews in the gospel lesson for this morning. So you and I can continue on our way to the promised land, which is the way of our As you and I were screaming down the highway of our life, from the baptismal font to the promised land, the prophet Isaiah reminds us, you and I are going to encounter the mountains and the hills, ginormous mountains, tall and steep mountains with vertical and sheer sides, the obstacles and the challenges of our life, mountains that are snow-covered and reach up into the clouds. When you and I hit those mountains, we stand at the base of the mountain, and we look up and we say, No way, Lord! No way! There is no way that I can make it up over the top of that mountain. What happens to you and me? Jesus remains by our side. The 
and says to you and me, do not fear. Do not be afraid. And it reminds you and me that all power and authority in the heavens and the earth have been given to him. Power and authority to lay the high places low until they become a single plane so you and I can cross over them and continue our way to the promised land. It is the way of our Lord. As you and I go screaming down the highway of our life from the baptismal pond to the promised land, Isaiah the prophet tells us that you and I are going to encounter the valleys. Valleys that are dark and cold. You and I get those valleys when you and I lose the important things of this life. Our job, our money, our land, our status, our health, our independence due to COVID-19. Those we have known the best and loved the best who have been called home before us. When you and I get those cold and dark valleys, Jesus who remains by our side, then speaks to you and me and says, do not fear. Do not be afraid. I am here for you in your time and hour of need to help you. It reminds us that all power and authority in the heavens and the earth belongs to him. Power and authority to reach down his hands under the cold and dark valley and lift the cold and dark valley up with us in it and make it a level plane so that you and I can cross over it and continue our way to the promised land. It is the way of our Lord. We go back to the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah reminds us that as you and I make our pilgrimage from the baptismal font to the promised land, screaming down the highway that is placed before us, you and I are going to encounter the uneven ground. There is perhaps nothing harder in this life and world to try to walk in a straight line when one leg is higher than the other leg. It happens to you and me as you go through this life when things are kicked out of balance, when things are taken to the extreme, to the outer limits and the twilight zone, we find ourselves empty and dazed, not knowing who to talk to, and if we even did, we wouldn't even know what to say. Overpowered and overwhelmed. At those times, Jesus who remains by your side, promises to come to you and say to you, Do not fear. Do not be afraid. I mean man. Here with you to help you in your hour and time of need. All power and authority in the heavens and the earth have been given to him. To bind up the brokenhearted. To put together those things that are broken. To give hope to those who are helpless. And help to those who are helpless. So you and I continue going down the way to the promised land. That is the way of our Lord. Finally, the prophet Isaiah reminds us that you and I go screaming down the highway of our life from the baptismal font to the promised land. You and I are going to be hit the rough roads. You and I who live in the Midwest, you and I who live in a country, we know all about the rough roads. We know all about the dirty and dusty dirt washboard roads that we have to go down. When you and I hit those washboard roads, you and I are forced, are forced to slow it down. To slow it down to five miles an hour. To slow it down to a crawl. Because if we go any faster, we're going to rattle the car and the truck right off the wheels. Here's the problem. You and I, as God's people, as we go through life, we can 
get to the point where we go through life 900 miles an hour. Mach 6 with our hair on fire. Going here and going there and going everywhere. Mach 6, 900 miles an hour. And here's the problem. Our God never created us to go always that far and that long at 900 miles an hour. If we do, we are going to fry out. We are going to be like a french fry, burned to a crisp. We are going to get burned out. So, at those times when God comes to you and me, Emmanuel, God with us, and says, do not fear, do not be afraid. And he's got ways to create situations and circumstances to slow us down. Way, way down. Down to a crawl. So you and I can reassess where we're at in life. So you and I can consider what the important things in life really are. So you and I can listen to friends and family. So you and I can listen to our own body. You're going way too fast. So you and I can listen to God. So that you and I can enjoy God's handiwork and smell the roses for his glory is revealed. So you and I can enjoy life as we travel on our way from the baptismal font to the promised land. It is the way of our Lord. The way that you and I can always trust. The way that you and I can always depend upon. The way that you and I can always count on, no matter what. Today, and tomorrow,
love the seed time and a gathering of the fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we would all when we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue with the service of the sacrament in the preface, starting at the top of page 100. 